Hi guys, it's Trina with Blue Ridge Diva Designs. And I'm back to do a tutorial for you guys on how to make this ring that matches this lovely set of earrings and bracelet um, that I made a while back. Um, of course, I had mentioned in the earring video that I used 60 seed beads and then 8 millimeter faceted round AB crystals here on the ring, the earrings, and the bracelet. And on the earrings in the ring that I'm demoing for you this week, I'm going to be using these 8 millimeter yellow faceted rounds with the AB finish. And I'm using some 3 millimeter ivory pearls or cream pearls, whichever you I think these are just ivory, they're not really dark like the cream. So there's the earrings that we made in the other video. And then this will be the ring that we're working on now. And like I said before, instead of, you know, using the sea beads, I'm using the pearls. Now to start the ring, we're going to be doing the same exact thing that I did in the earring project. And that is to show you guys how to situate your first uh, two beads so that your beads that go around your larger bead sit really pretty and very elegant looking very professional looking in this fashion I right, said so the first thing you'll do is going to pick up your eight millimeters bead whichever big bead you guys are using and I'm just going to leave myself a small tail once again to hold on to uh, and to make a knot then I'm going to pick up one of my three millimeter pearls. Let me just do a second here. And I'm just going to come right back down. This is my tail thread. This is my working thread. I'm going to come right back down on the same side that my working thread is coming out of. And then I'm just going to pull. And now I have this pearl sitting on top of my bead. Let me make sure I'm still in frame. All right. Now, I'm going to pick up one more pearl. Actually, I'm going to tie the knot. That's right, I almost forgot. I'm going to tie a knot here. Just two overhanded knots between my tail thread and my working thread. Then I'm just going to take those two threads at the same time and give them a little jiggle over to the side like that so I don't have any trouble getting through my big bead, which I don't have to pass through that bead very many times, so it's really not a big problem. So I'm putting in three millimeter pearl on my needle and passing right back up through my center of my eight millimeter bead. And I'm giving a pull. And this is why you want to leave enough of your tail thread to hold on to. All right, so now I'm coming out underneath my pearl. So I'm going to take my needle from left to right and go through the pearl and, and position the holes from side to side. So I have my holes on my pearl going from left to right. And now I'm just going to do this. Um, let me see my ring so I don't get a, make a mistake here. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the earring on both sides. I'm going to create one unit of right angle weave. So, what we're going to do first is pick up three pearls. First, I'm going to get all this jewelry off of my thread. All right, so I'm picking up three of my pearls, my three millimeters. Okay. Oops, I dropped my pearl. Well, that one just doesn't want to be nabbed. Let's try this one. Okay, now my working thread is coming out to the right of my beadwork, so I'm going to take my needle and go from left to right. And I'm going to pull, and that will create my first unit of right angle weave. And I'm going to twist my work around and work over this way. All right, so now I have this right angle weave, and I need to work down to this bead, so I'm going to be picking up my five pearls. And on the earring video, I showed you guys how to determine how many beads you'll need on the side, depending on what you're using, what size center beads you're using, and what size, uh, you know, accent beads you're using. I know, for for my sake, that I need five, but.
but to determine that once again I'll show you one more time you will pick up like I picked up five to start with and what you'll do is you'll hold your beads tight down here near your work and then just drag them over there and make sure that they're gonna fit around this bead nice and snug without any gaps or thread showing so five is the one the magic number for my eight millimeter bead in my three millimeter pearls my thread is coming out up here on the left hand side so I'm going to go through this bead at the bottom from left to right and pull and now I want to create my next unit of right angle weave since I'm in position I'm just going to pick up three more pearls and my thread is coming out to the right so I'm going to take my needle and go through that bead again from left to right and pull my thread through and get my tail thread back out of the way I think I pulled it up just a little and I don't want it up I want it down so to separate them out just a little bit yeah there we go okay so now I've got my next unit of right angle weave here at the top and I've just got to pull really snug to get everything back into position because um, I had to wiggle to get my tail thread out all right so I'm coming out here on the right hand side and it's time to pick up my last five pearls then we're going to talk about um, what I like to do when making rings and I think this is the first ring that I've done a tutorial for so now would be a good time. Let me get my five pearls picked up. I've got a problem here. Sorry, guys. My thread's giving me an issue. All right, so I have my five pearls. And I'm coming out, like I said, to the right-hand side of this pearl. Now, when I go down to position my next five pearls on I want to make sure that I'm going through that bottom pearl of this right angle weave unit that is part of my beadwork that goes around my eight millimeter bead but not one of the side beads that's part of the right angle weave unit and then I'm just going to go ahead and pull and nice and snug just like that now, I want to tighten everything up and tie some knots. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I like to create these ring tops, and I learned this from Jana on uh, B4 Backup and Beating for Perfectionists, that it's always a better idea to do your ring top separate from your ring band because your ring band gets the most wear and tear. If something happens to your ring band and you've created it separately, and your ring top will still be safe from damage. And it's really easy to repair ring bands, and it's really hard to repair the whole ring. So I worked my way just back around that uh, the loop in the direction that my working thread was coming out. And I'm coming out this bead here, and I'm going to go down one more time through the beads on the opposite side of my beadwork. You can see things are still a little loosey-goosey. That's okay, because I'm going to tie some half-inch knots just as soon as I get back around here. You end up finished going through the three other three pearls I added as part of the side units. And now I'm going to tie a half-inch knot before I pass through the bottom bead of that right angle weave unit there. So I'm going to go up through the thread, right here where my thread is coming out, where my working thread is coming out. And I'm going to pull nice and slow till I have a loop. And I'm going to make sure that the loop is where I need for it to be. And let me get my tail th thread out of the way again. Okay. Now, I need for my loop to be sitting in between the bead where my working thread is coming out and the bead to the right, which is the bottom bead of this unit. That I'm going to be going into next so I'm going to pull that down just a little further pass my needle through that loop 
and gently go slow and get it down close. And then I'm going to pull it right into position just like that and create my knot. Now I'm going to pass through that next bead, which is the bottom bead of my right angle weave unit that sits closest to my beadwork. So there's one knot. Now I'm coming out on this side of that same bead. I'm going to do my, the same thing and create a knot here. I'm just going to dive under the thread. Gently pull my, th my thread like this until I have this loop sitting between that bottom bead of the right angle weave unit and the next bead to the right. And I'm going to stick my needle through the loop and pull gently and slowly. And then I'm going to pull this really snug and quick down right in there so that my half inch knot is formed between those two beads. All right, so now I need to do my ring band. And what I'm going to do is come on down around these five beads on this side, the left side of this, uh, my eight millimeter. And I have to go through two more of the five and then one more at the bottom of this right angle weave unit. Now I'm going to work up into this right angle weave. So I'm going to, I'm on the left, I flipped my work, I'm going up through the bead on the left hand side. And from left to right through this bead at the top of my right angle weave unit. Now, from this point, this is where I'll create a ring band. Now, let me get a look and see where we are here. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. This is what I have so far. And I'm going to go ahead and snip this tail thread out of my way. So I can show you guys exactly where I'm at. All right, so I'm coming out of this bead at the top of this right angle weave unit here. Now on this ring, I just did a simple right angle weave band all the way around using the same size seed beads as I did when I created this uh, center around my bigger bead. And I like the way that looks and everything. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and check it out and see what it looks like for this project. So in order to do that, I'm just going to start picking up series of three of my pearls because we'll be using this bead where my thread is coming out as part of our four bead unit. And so we've done right angle weave a couple of times so you guys should know about that. So my thread's coming to the right so I'm going to pass my needle from left to right to form my little unit. Pull everything snug, then I've got to work back through and reinforce. So I'll go up to the left or right, whichever side your tail thread was or your working thread was exiting. Go to the next bead up, over across your top bead, down through this bead on the other side, and then back through this bead that's shared between your two units and then to get into position to add another unit you'll go back up through this bead on the same side that your working threads on and back across the top bead and now that bead will become your shared bead so I'm going to flip my work over so my working thread is here on the left so it's time to pick up my next three beads so I'll pick up three more three millimeter pearls. Well, maybe I will. Here, let's try a different one. All right, so I'm coming out on the left. So I'm going to take my needle to the right and go past the right to left and chase my working thread. Then reinforce. Coming out to the left, so I'll go up the bead on the left, across this top bead, down this bead on the right. And if you'll notice that I work this reinforcement one bead at a time, 
and I do that so that my red angle weave units maintain their shape and their position and everything looks really professional and put together well. If you, sometimes if you go through two beads at once you, you twist the thread in there and you put a permanent odd spot in your band. So to me it's worth it to take the little bit of extra time and do my reinforcement properly. So my finished piece comes out looking really well. Alright so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys how to figure out how to how much band you're going to need. So the first thing you'll want to figure out is what size ring you're making. You can use a mandrel if you're ma making this for sale. If you want to make some different sizes, use a ring mandrel to size it out. Or you can do if you're doing it for yourself, you'll just measure it around your finger. So at, say I want to wear it on my ring finger here. I will lay, position that so that the stone is in the middle of my finger and I'm going to work my way around until this part, uh, the other end of my band is to within just a couple of beads, like a tiny little fraction here of this unit of right angle weave because in order to connect them, we'll have to create one final unit of right angle weave using this bead and this bead and only adding in some side beads. So let me go ahead and work for a couple of minutes. I'll get my band the length that I need for it to be, and I'll be right back and show you guys how to close this up. Okay, guys, so here I am, and I've got my band almost the length that I needed. I'm within one unit. So when I wrap it around my finger, and I bring it around, I see that this is going to fit me really nicely with the addition of these last few beads, as you can see right here. And that's how I measure it. So what I'm going to do is connect these two pieces now. So I'm coming out of my top bead here to the left. And here is the bead on the, this end of the, uh, my ring top that I want to work with. So I'm going to pick up one bead on my needle. And because I'm coming out to the left here, I'm going to pass this needle through this bead at the top of my ring uh, ring top here from left to right and I'm going to pull and try not to get hung on everything in the house. Alright, so and you don't want your work to twist to so be really careful on this part. And a lot of times I'll just stick my finger in there like that so I can get a clearer picture of what I'm actually doing. So now I've come out of this side here, picked up a bead came in through this bead from the same side over to here. Now I'll need to pick up a bead to close this unit. I'm going to pick up one more pearl and I'm going to come back through this bead here from the opposite side to this side where my working thread was. So I'm going to be going from left to right at this point and I'm going to pull my needle. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to give you guys a little jiggle there. Let me make sure if I'm still in frame. Everything's still cool. All right, so if you'll see, when I pull that through, you'll see how nicely my ring band takes shape here and looks good. But I need to reinforce this unit at least once, maybe twice. So I'm coming out to the right of my bead here. So I need to pass up through the right bead above it, going to, towards the top of my ring. I'm going to go through this pearl here. You know, pull it nice and snug. And now I'm going to go through the bead on my right angle weave unit that I made when I made my ring top. So I'm going from right to left here through that pearl. And I'm going to pull. Now I'll go down this bead on the left, just one bead. Following along my thread path of my right ankle weave, and then back through this center bead from left to right. And there I've gotten a nice connection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through one more time, and then I'm going to tie some half hitch knots. So I'm coming out here to the right hand side of that bead right here. So I'm going to go up the bead on the right towards the top of my ring. One more time, pull my thread. Then I'm going to pass through my connection bead here from right to left. And 
and I'm going to pull it nice and snug. I'm going to go down the bead on the left, just one pearl or one bead, whichever size bead you're using. I really like the way these pearls came out. It's really pretty, very elegant. And then I'm passing through that bead from left to right one more time. And now, in order to tie off my thread, I'm going to go ahead and work my way up to this little circle going around my bead. So I'm coming out here on the right-hand side of this pearl. So I'm going to go up through the right-hand bead one more time. I'm going to come through this center bead from right to left. Then I'm going to pass up the left, but pass up through this bead on the left, going up towards the top of my ring band at this point. So let me just wiggle my needle if I can get through this pearl here. And now I'll need to pass through this bead that's part of my circle, but was the original bead that was part of also this right angle weave. And I'm going to go from left to right because my working thread is coming out on the left hand side. And I'm going to pass through two pearls. You can pass through as many as you'd like because now I'm just going to tie a couple of half hitch knots. Alright, so I'm coming out between this second pearl over from my right angle weave unit right here. And I'm coming out between these two pearls. So I'm going to make my loop here. I'm going to pass my needle. It's right under my work my thread bridge from the loop of beads going around my big bead. There's my loop. I'm going to put my needle through it. And I'm going to go kind of slow so everything works out the way that I want it to. And then I'm just going to pull it down into position nice and snug between those two pearls. Then I'm going to move over a few pearls. I'm going through three. And I'm going to do the same thing between these two pearls. So I'm coming out right here. I'm going under that thread. I'm using my fingernail kind of to hold that thread into place so that my loop comes up between the two beads I'm working with. And I'm working between where I want my knot. Put my needle through the loop. And pull nice and slow and snugly get it right down in between those two pearls. And then I'll move on through a couple more pearls. And there we have our beautiful little ring. Our band is all snug, nice and secure and tight because I reinforced every single right angle weave unit. I had tied and completed uh, my ring top and tied it off separately. Even though I didn't cut the thread, I created my half hitch knots uh, on my from my ring top before I started creating the band. So if anything happens to the band, then I know that my ring top is still secure and I can just replace the band. And now I'm just going to try it on, and it fits really nicely, and it looks pretty cute. And so what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and stop for the for, for now, and in the next few days I'm going to try to get the bracelet video done, and I'm also going to be doing a necklace video on how to create a necklace to match. Um, I want to make one to match the tangerine set, and I guess I will also make one to match my new little pearls and yellow uh, crystal set. I'll have to come up with a good name for this one. This one's Frosted Tangerine, so I'll have to, you guys can maybe can throw me down a suggestion in the comments on what you think would be a good name for these beautiful little yellow AB crystals and pearls. All right, guys, so that's it for now. So, so far, we've created the earrings and the ring. Like I said, we'll be doing the bracelet and a necklace soon. All right, so this is Dee from Blue Ridge Diva getting ready to sign off, but just go ahead and remember that you can subscribe to my channel. Please click subscribe. If you like the video, click like. If you don't like the video, you're more than welcome to click don't like, but please leave a comment as to how you think I can improve the video. Um, don't forget to um, go to my Facebook page, which is Blue Ridge Diva Designs. Um, like my page there for some extra uh, little extra things that I post from time to time, pattern ideas, jewelry ideas. Um, and then also join our group, which is uh, Blue Ridge Diva Designs Fun and Extra Stuff. 
I'm just getting started with all these things, so you guys be patient with me, but I plan on having lots of information sheets and patterns and things like that that you can download from the Facebook group page, um, you know, whenever I can get that kind of thing ready for you. All right, guys, well, have a great day, and happy 